This is Donnie Moss, a nine-year-old high-functioning autistic savant from New York. Uh, very limited social skills, but he could calculate six-digit prime numbers in his head. If you recognize the name at all, you'll know that this picture was taken before he was subjected to experimental therapy in which a tweaked retrovirus rewrote certain critical genes linked to his condition. Basically, we hoped to cure his autism by rewriting his code at the molecular level. This is Donnie Moss, eight weeks after the onset of gene therapy. Uh, this discoloration is not anemia. Donnie's blood volume had actually increased by 7% since the first picture was taken, uh, but he had begun to redistribute the blood volume away from the peripheral tissues and sequester it deep in the core for reasons that were, at that time anyway, unknown. And while this bloodless conflection is Donnie's most obvious physical symptom, there were others, including marked recession of the gum line that you can see here, and increased reflectivity of the retina, reminiscent of the tapetum lucidum found in the eyes of cats and other nocturnal predators. We also noticed behavioral changes. Uh, Donnie exhibited increased activity levels during the nighttime and began sleeping during the day. And during sleep, his metabolic rate, quite alarmingly, fell to about half of what it should have been for a child of that age. Uh, perhaps most disturbingly, a psychological testing revealed an increasing lack of affect and reduced responses to emotionally charged stimuli. When shown photos of people mutilated during car accidents or Homeland Security interviews, for example, Donnie's skin conductivity and ECG were scarcely different from when he was shown neutral pictures, such as landscapes or still lifes. We would have liked to pursue this aspect further and had, in fact, arranged for a series of MRIs, but Donnie's parents uh, withdrew permission at the last moment after one of our technicians accidentally left the slideshow running during visiting hours. And suffice to say, based on the data we did collect, Donnie was developing the behavioral symptoms of a clinical psychopath. He was scoring progressively higher on the hair psychopathy checklist, and his empathy quotient, which was pretty low to begin with, uh, began dropping even further. At around the same time, his performance on general pattern matching and logic tests began going through the roof, and his numerical hyperperformance, which had always been limited to the calculation of primes, began manifesting in other areas as well. Donnie was suddenly able to perform calendar tricks, and he developed a real facility for calculus, for example. Unfortunately, we were never able to assess the ultimate extent of his abilities, since around the 11-week mark, he grew increasingly uncooperative with our research staff, and at times became quite violent. This is of uh, Donnie just prior to autopsy, 16 weeks after the onset of therapy. The gum line recession has become unmistakably pronounced, uh, as has the skin pallor, uh, although the fact that Donnie is uh, dead may be a factor here as well. The rictus reflects Donnie's condition at death. In fact, he died following the onset of sudden violent convulsions which strongly resembled grand mal seizures. Now, like epilepsy, these seizures appear to have been provoked by some critical visual stimulus, but he wasn't watching any flashing or strobing lights when the convulsions began. He was viewing a multimedia display we'd used for psychological testing many times before without any problems. Looking back, he had grown increasingly reluctant to use the display in the days prior to his complications, and this might have suggested some kind of aversive reaction uh, building over time. Uh, back then, of course, we quite reasonably assumed that this was just part and parcel of his increasing overall belligerence. Uh, and there was no reason to expect that strapping him down, uh, pinning his eyes open, and forcing him to watch the display would have had such uh, dramatic results. Uh, hindsight, as they say, is, is 20, 20 At any rate, this is the multimedia panel that provoked Donnie's difficulties. And as it turns out, it wasn't so much the pictures themselves as the darkness between them that was the source of the problem. Now, it is important not to lose sight of the fact that while these side effects were rather extreme, the therapy did in fact cure Donnie's autism. Uh, it would therefore be needlessly pessimistic to describe our preliminary work as, as a failure, especially since even the side effects themselves, uh, while admittedly fatal, did result in some profoundly important findings that I'll be sharing with you today. Autopsy revealed a number of significant findings at both gross and microscopic levels. Uh, capillary beds were forming in the body core. Now, we all have these. The digestive system is highly vascularized to facilitate nutrient transport from the intestine into the bloodstream. But Donnie was developing capillary meshes that didn't interface with any actual organs. They seemed to function solely as reservoirs uh, to keep the blood sequestered in the core. Tissue levels of adenosine triphosphate were elevated. ATP is the 
chemical battery that powers the cell and this would explain the abnormal strength and stamina that donny displayed during his final belligerent days blood work turned up the high concentrations of lewin catholic and opioid peptide found in animals like bears and squirrels where it is involved in hibernation donny's immune system also showed unusual resistance to prionic diseases like chrysler yucca mad cow disease if you will such resistance is usually found only in cannibalistic cultures cannibals are a high risk group when it comes to prions Donnie's amygdala and his visual cortex, uh, essentially the pattern matching wetware at the back of the head, were 7% and 13% larger than they should have been, respectively. Uh, synaptic interconnections between the anterior cingulate gyrus and the rest of the brain were much lower than normal, almost as if the core of the brain were being isolated from the neocortex. We also discovered some very unusual wiring in the retina. Now, some of you may know that our cells, or our eyes rather, contain whole arrays of specialized receptor cells. Some fire only when they see light and shadow in conjunction. Some fire only when they see horizontal lines, horizons, and so on. In Donnie's case, the receptors that respond to horizontal lines had somehow become crosswired with those that responded to vertical ones. When both sets of receptors fired simultaneously in a very specific way, that is, when intersecting right angles occupied more than 30 degrees of visual arc, a sort of neuroelectrical overload occurred in the visual cortex. This was what had caused Donnie's adverse reaction to the cross imagery on the display. What the hell was happening here? Well, our best guess was that gene therapy had somehow kick-started part of Donnie's so-called junk DNA, activating a suite of ancient genes which haven't expressed for somewhere on the order of a few hundred thousand years. But these were not just random accidental glitches. This was a complete interacting set of, of ancestral traits systematically affecting everything from the GI tract to the central nervous system. Now, you're all familiar with the hoary old cliches about the beast within or monsters from the id. It appears that the psychoanalysts might have actually guessed right on this one. Donnie appeared to be in the process of turning into a completely different organism, uh, something that might even qualify as a different subspecies. Adoni's death proved somewhat problematic to the research. Our post-mortem work was severely hampered by his next of kin, who in their grief-stricken state seemed to hold us in some way responsible for his death. Despite our best efforts, they refused to release the body for further research, and our attempts at court action were hamstrung by a judicial system that really tends to value motherhood issues over science. We were ultimately able to serve Donnie's parents with an emergency injunction compelling them to relinquish the body, uh, but by that time, unfortunately, the remains had been cremated. Uh, but all was not lost. Uh, Donnie was far from a unique individual. The genes responsible for his transformation are widely spread amongst the population. They're just dormant in most of us. And it turns out that in certain cases, some of these genes do express spontaneously. It was looking increasingly possible that psychopathy, autism, and certain types of schizophrenia, to name but a few, might arise at least partly from the partial expression of these genes, albeit in a very broken and rudimentary form. Sociopaths and savants show us one or two bits of this hidden subspecies. Donnie showed us many more traits manifesting together, although even he was still a few bricks short of an operational prototype. But if we could awaken these traits, and if the genes were present in other people, who knew how much more we could discover with access to a large sample of human subjects under controlled conditions? Well, we applied for funding from a number of sources, including NSERC, uh, SHRC, the Department of National Defense, and the uh, Wellness Foundation of the West, Edmonton Mall. Uh, unfortunately, Canada's federal policy is, is not what you would describe as science-friendly. Uh, everyone turned us down, generally using some excuse along the uh, lines that our human subject protocols violated so-called ethical standards. Uh, we then sought funding in the U.S., specifically the state of Texas, which routinely incorporate, incarcerates large numbers of people under conditions suitable for experimentation. Uh, even here, we encountered some resistance from the so-called family values lobby. However, we were willing to stipulate contractually that our research did not involve the use of any fetal tissue on fertilized ova or seminal ejaculate, and that our studies in no way promoted or contributed to the spread of information regarding 
uh, contraception, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, or the T 